CapCut is a free mobile video editing app available on Android and iOS and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in this many minutes. I don't actually know how many minutes because I've not edited this video yet, which means there's no time to waste, so let's crack on. Stuart Carroll here, pleasure to talk to you as always. This is the first in a series of videos that we are doing working alongside the creators of CapCut. They are in fact the people that brought you TikTok. I have been very impressed, A, that this application is free, there's no pop-up ads, there's no in-app purchases, it's a clean piece of software and it has tremendous depth. There's things in here that you can do that you can't do on Final Cut Pro, so it's been a bit of a revelation for me and I'm keen to show you some of those features now. Inside CapCut, we have the option of opening a previous project or starting a new project. Now, I know it might sound a bit boring, but good media management really helps when it comes to video editing. And you can do yourself a lot of favours here by organising the clips that you expect to use in your edit into a separate CapCut folder within your phone. Here you can see I've got a whole bunch of videos, some work stuff, some family stuff. It's going to be a little bit difficult to work our way through that. So click on that little drop down arrow next to Recents and there you can see we've got a cap cut album where I've curated five clips that I want to use for this project. We can select all of these clips, one, two, three, four, five. And then if we hit Add, we'll drop them down onto our timeline. Now, a little tip I've got for you here as well is rather than do that, see if you can do a rough edit at this stage. We're editing on a mobile phone or a tablet. We don't have big computer screens. So editing on the timeline is not the best place for chopping down our clips if we can avoid it. If we look at the second clip that's one minute and three seconds long, rather than tap on the circle, we'll tap on the clip itself and we have the option of trimming this clip. So let's hit the trim button. And as you can see at present, we have 62.9 seconds selected. We don't want that. So let's drag in from the side to the starting point of a nice reveal. And let's drag in from the right hand side to the end point of that clip. That's going to save us a lot of scrolling and scrubbing on our little screen when we've got more than one clip on our timeline. So let's tick for that one. OK, and as you can see, we've got a little scissors icon there showing that we've already edited down that clip. I know you'll be desperate to fling all your clips into the timeline and start adding effects and colour grading, but honestly, this is editing. This is going to save you a lot of time and you'll get a lot more out of the app if you can be a little bit organised with your media management. So I'm going to go through the other four clips, select the select, and we'll be back in a second. Fantastic. Five curated clips, partially pre-edited before we've even hit the timeline. And we can go one better. We can even select the order that we're going to drop these down into the timeline now. Now, don't worry. You can change all of this once you're into the app proper, but it gives us a good starting point. So let's start with revealing the city. That's going to be our first shot. So we hit that number one and let's go in the following order. Two, three, four and do you know what? I think we will finish with the flags. And there you can see at the bottom of the screen, one, two, three, four, five clips. You can hit those little crosses if you want to delete them, but let's add them all, add five. Bingo, welcome to CapCut, and we already almost have a video edited. Well, not quite, but we've got the foundation to then work on all the cool creative stuff and really make this an engaging little clip. Before we go any further, let's make sure we have the project parameters set up correctly. Currently it says 1080p. Now these were all actually 4K clips, so let's go for maximum resolution and slide that up to 4K. More importantly than that, these clips were all shot at 25 frames per second, so we need to slide that slider down to 25 frames per second. For a quick summary of the rest of the interface, in the top right we have the export button. Obviously the image in the middle of your phone or tablet is the playback window. Here we can see the total length of the project and the current position of the playhead. At the moment it's five seconds, so that's the shot you're seeing on the screen. The play and pause button, the undo and redo buttons, and the full screen button. On the timeline itself you can use your finger to scroll left and right and scrub through the footage and you can use two fingers to pinch zoom to get more of the clips on the screen itself. So let's see the whole project. There we go, there's the whole project now displayed on the screen. A little bit of housekeeping we need to do to tidy up this timeline at the outset. We'll zoom in a little bit and scroll right to the end. CapCut tags on this little kind of created with CapCut type icon thing, which you may or may not want. But if you don't want it, just so we can demonstrate how to delete, tap on that clip and you can see there there's a little delete icon is highlighted and we'll just delete that now to keep our timeline nice and clean. 
Like I said previously, when you're curating and importing your clips, you're not bound by any of those decisions. We can tinker with it here on the timeline. So if we want to move this clip before the previous clip, tap and hold on it. And as you can see, everything compresses up. And look at that. I've now got control to move that clip. So let's just move it here. Oop, there it goes. Switches out. Job done. And we've alternated the position of those two clips. With the rough cut done, let's finesse our editing. We'll zoom in on the timeline so the first clip fills up as much of the space as possible, gives us more room to work with. Let's find the exact spot we want to start this clip by scrubbing with our finger here. So, okay, we don't want this at the start. We want the camera to start moving. Okay, I think about there is probably a good place to start the clip. In this instance, the easiest way to trim that clip is to tap on the clip itself and if we hit that split icon it will make a cut at the position of the playhead. So let's do just that, we hit the split there. Let's select the piece of the clip that we want to discard and hit the delete button. Bingo, it's gone. The other way we can trim clips is to select the clip and then you can pull in the handle from the side there. It's also a very good option because you can scrub to find the end of the clip as we'll do here. Okay, about here where the camera stops moving. You drag the handle in and it snaps to the playhead there and we're done. Much like a computer-based non-linear editor, we can add B-roll to our timeline here so we can stack up layers of footage if we want to, for various reasons, very simply here in CapCut. Scroll roughly to the spot where you want to drop your overlay footage and hit the overlay button. We'll add an overlay. Back again in the CapCut folder, you can see I've added a little clip of myself sitting at a desk. So let's select that, have a look, see if we need to trim it. Oh, well, we don't need the waving hands, do we? So let's get rid of that. Okay, we'll start here and let's take it back to here or something. Five seconds of it. Okay, so we've got a rough cut already done at the import stage and we will add that. And there you can see me overlaid on top of the primary timeline footage. Now, don't get confused like I do all the time when you see the B-roll is underneath the primary timeline footage. It's still visible on top of the primary timeline footage. Same editing rules apply for your B-roll. You can drag the handles in at the side there to extend or shorten that clip. And you can tap and hold it to then reposition it as you wish. This is the perfect time to show you one of CapCut's coolest features. With the B-roll selected, let's just slide across on our options here down at the bottom. Look at that, remove background. Let's tap that, see what happens. What? The background has been completely removed and that wasn't a blue screen or a green screen. This works even if you have a noisy background. There's AI recognition of the body shape and it just cuts it out so, so well. Now, obviously this isn't what we want. So let's pinch to zoom out on myself. Okay, let's go with that. I'm nice and small. Tap and hold on myself and will drag me down into the bottom right hand corner of the image here. Check that out. With just a couple of taps, I've overlaid my B-roll overlay, whatever you want to call it, resized it, removed the background, stuck myself down in the bottom corner. Let's have a little play through that. It's absolutely brilliant. To go back to the main timeline, hit that left arrow twice, and now you can see we've got this little teardrop showing us where our B-roll is. The overlay is, in fact, overlaid on top of the primary timeline footage. You can see that red line is covering the two clips that we have chosen to extend our B-roll across. And if you want to go back into your B-roll to edit it, just tap that little teardrop and you're back in and you can make any changes you like. We're going to do a complete tutorial on background removal here in CapCut. The creative opportunities are fantastic as a result. So stick around for that, do subscribe. But for now, we'll crack on with the more basic editing techniques. Titles are a great way to introduce your video and here in CapCut it's super easy to do just that. So we scroll roughly to where we want our title to come in and we hit the text button. There are hundreds of automatic text templates that we can use. Some of them are really, really cool. Can have a lot of fun with those, but in this instance, I think we'll make our own. So we go to add text, type in the name of the town. We can change the font. Let's go with something like that. Okay, that's kind of cool. Looks a bit like a kind of horror movie font. We can tap and make that text bigger. The opportunities here are endless, but one thing that's definitely worth doing is having your text fade in or scroll in or something so it doesn't just go bang on the screen. Let's pick one of these animations. Uh, we'll go for dissolve. Okay, that looks kind of cool. And we can control 
the length of time it takes for that animation to take place. We'll make it fairly quick. Let's go for one and a half seconds in this instance. Hit the tick button. Let's go back to the main timeline and see how that looks. Nice, but as you can see, we need to trim that clip so it matches the end of the underlying clip. So we'll just go in there and drag that handle and the magnetic nature of the timeline here allows us to just easily find that transition point. Now that we're back in the main timeline, you can see the text that we've added depicted by that orange line above the first clip. If you want to make modifications to the text, unlike the teardrop that we get with the B-roll, we tap the text button and it shows us all our text that we've added to the timeline. Let's play that one last time, see what we've got. In comes the animated text and the cut is perfect with the next clip. Really cool. Okay, I'm happy with the way this is shaping up. I think it'd be nice to have some transitions between some of those clips though. CapCut has loads of transitions and if you've never played around with expensive video editing software for your computer, a ton of the stuff in here would be paid extras as plugins for the likes of Final Cut Pro. So it's really cool to actually come to a piece of software like this and see just what it can do when you're used to a different approach. So anyway, in terms of transitions, those little white boxes in between two clips give the option of adding transitions. Tap on one of them and up come our transition options. Depending on what you're editing, discretion is the name of the game. There's a lot to work with here. Sometimes simpler is better. So if in doubt, dial it back a little bit on the effect. For this one, we're just going to find something fairly simple. Some kind of blur, crossfade type thing. Mix works pretty well. Tap on it and we get a preview. Now, I think that happened very fast there. So let's make it a little bit longer. Okay, let's go for a one second mix. Nice, okay, that's a cross dissolve, more typically called a cross dissolve, and I think that works really nicely. Tap the tick, and there you can see the icon has changed to a little cap cut transition type icon, showing us that we have put a transition between those two clips. Next up, we want to add some music, and surprise, surprise, it's very easy to do. Here we are in the main timeline. We're at the start of our project because that's where we want to start our music. Tap the audio icon. Let's go for sounds. In this instance, I think we'll go for the vlog album, and here you get a whole bunch of songs that you can download. There's one I've used previously, Canary, so we'll hit the plus icon there, and boom, look at that. Underneath our timeline, you can see our music. Now you're getting the hang of this app, you'll know that if you tap on the track itself, you get some more options. We can adjust the volume, we can fade the track in and out, we can cut it and trim it much like we would an audio track, and so on and so forth. Color correcting and color grading is very easy to do. In CapCut, you can do it at the individual clip level or you can do it at the entire project level. So here we are in the main timeline. Let's make an adjustment to the entire project. Scroll across to filters. And here we have a whole bunch of color presets that we can apply to our footage. One I quite like is this umber one. Tap on that. Okay, it's coming on a bit strong there. So we're gonna dial that back a little bit. And this is basically your teal and orange holiday vibe type thing. As you can see, the sky's gone from blue to a little bit turquoisey. Look closely at my skin tones, they're oranging up a little bit, which is always good for holiday videos. So let's leave that at 50%. Hit the tick button there. Okay, and as you can see, it's only applied it to a certain portion of the video. So let's drag it out to the whole video. Okay, there we go. And we'll take it all the way back to the start. And we'll have a little scrub through and make sure it's not messed up our colors, but I think it's actually done a really nice job in this instance. It's warmed things up a little bit, it's given us that holiday vibe, and I think it's perfect, lovely. If you did want to modify an individual clip, however, we tap on that clip itself, as you know we get a whole bunch of options. There's the filters that we could have added our lookup table or our preset to that clip, but since we've done that already, let's just make an individual color adjustment by hitting adjust, and there we can play around with the saturation, for example. So let's say that sky is a little bit vivid for our tastes. We want the color adjustment to that kind of teal sky, but we don't want all that bright saturation in the blue there. So we just dial that back a little bit, and there we've made an individual adjustment within our entire project. Thereafter, you can play around to your heart's content with all these other settings. We're going to have to leave that for another day, so do stay tuned, stick with us, and you will learn a whole bunch about all that stuff as well. 
Keep in mind that editing is just one step in the process. It helps if you have nice footage to edit. We can teach you everything you need to know about that, especially from a mobile filmmaking perspective. Do check out some of our previous content in that respect. We have a mobile video camera app comparison chart that you're going to want to check out, link in the description below. And we also have a free video editing software guide. So you can learn what video editing software does, figure out what functionality you need and pick the right piece of software for you. So do check out the links in the description below. Let me wrap up a couple of things and then we will export. On this B-roll clip, we can hear me talking. Now in this instance, we don't actually want to. So we'll select the B-roll clip, volume, scroll that all the way down to zero, and that's me muted. As for the music track, we want to fade that out. So we go back to the main timeline, we select the music track, hit the fade button and the fade out duration, we take that up from zero to, let's say two seconds. Now we can actually see the fade out depicted in our waveform. Finally, we don't want our video to just stop. A nice fade to black would be nice. So we'll select the clip itself, go to animation. On the out option there, we'll hit fade out. And let's see what the duration is. Oh, okay, I think we'll make it a little bit longer. Let's make it two seconds. And you can see there, that little red overlay on the clip, that shows us where our fade out transition is. And there, if we scrub through that, you can see it fading out. Beautiful. I think we're done folks. Let's export. Double check that your export settings are still the way you want them. 4K 25 frames per second. Hit the export button. Wait for things to export and we are done. Super simple. I think you can tell why I'm quite excited about this app. I've spent years of my life in front of a computer messing about with Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, all the rest of it. It's been what we've done here, quite frankly, for the best part of 10 years. It's nice to be able to edit something easily on a phone if the circumstances permit and are applicable and you can get really great results with some really cool effects. And as I say, we've only scratched the surface here of what CapCut can do. So stay tuned for future content. Do check out the description below for some of those freebies and guides that we have going on. I think it'll be useful. Check out the rest of the content on our channel because of course you want to be a good filmmaker to have some nice shots to be able to put into your editing app in the first place. And we will see you next time.